Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I'm your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I have this amazing guest with me today. This is Amy Wees from Amazing at Home. We go way back. We met like, I, I swear it was like 2015 or something at some Amazon conference that we were both just kind of dipping our toes into the water of the stuff. And all of a sudden, like, let's fast forward almost 10 years, almost, it's close, eight years um, of how, how, what are we doing? What, what's this big Amazon thing going on? So Amy is a product development specialist, a sourcing specialist, which is why she's here today, because she, we are going to dive into advanced sourcing, right? Because you guys are sourcing for your wholesale bundles and you're doing okay, but let's just be real. We need to get our costs down. We need a good quality products. And Amy's here to talk all about that. She's an expert at sourcing overseas, specifically in China and Mexico. And without further ado, welcome, Amy. So glad that you're here. Thank you, Kristen, for having me. It's been, you know, too long since we've reconnected and I'm excited today to add some value for your listeners. Um, I know sourcing is something that all of us, including myself, you know, I'm a seller as well, um, have struggled with over the years, but it's something that if you can get down, it can change everything for your business. So excited to be here today and, and talk about this. So let's get right into it. So give us a little bit of your own selling journey, your background. I know you're an inventor. I know you have your own products, everything. So get everybody just the, the, the bird's eye view of, of you and your, your journey so far. Yeah. So I started selling on Amazon in 2007 when I was in the United States Air Force and I was flipping my college textbooks. I was actually looking to buy college textbooks for cheaper because they're so darn expensive, right? And I saw this little button on Amazon that said, sell yours here. And so I was like, oh, cool, you know? And then I started flipping other things. I was like selling whatever, right? Like whatever I could, whatever I could find, I was selling on Amazon, making my own packaging, merchant fulfilling back then. Um, and then um, I took a little break from it. I got stationed in Hawaii and um, back then, you know, it was very expensive to ship from Hawaii. It was hard. So I, I couldn't do the same things that I was doing before. I started an Etsy business while I was in Hawaii painting um, wine glasses and beer steins. And that's how I got to know Etsy. And um, I learned that the creator like make your own products business is very hard and very time consuming and for not a lot of payoff unless you can sell something for a very high price right uh, but it was still a unique and awesome experience and then in 2017 i returned here to san antonio texas and i came up with an idea for a product that solved a problem for cleaning the litter box for cats um I didn't like the smell, I didn't like the chore. And so I got to work inventing a better solution. And um, I launched that product, well first, before I launched that product, um, we started doing all kinds of different models because Amazon had changed, right? So we realized, okay, the FBA is out now, like it's a totally different world. We know we can launch on Amazon because my account's there and I've you know, got some experience there, but like totally different now. And, you know, in 2015, 2016, 2017, that's when the most millionaires were made because the FBA model came out and everybody was selling this way. Um, and so when I got into it in 2017, I was like, okay, things have changed. I need to figure this out, right? So I started doing retail arbitrage to learn I did wholesale to learn. I was doing some wholesale bundles. I was securing wholesale suppliers in the US. I got really good at closing deals. I'm a really great copywriter. So I would call up these wholesale companies, these, these different brands. And I would be like, hey, this is what your competitor's doing on Amazon. And this is what why you're missing out. Um, I want to sell your products. Let's go. Or I'm already selling your products through a distributor. I'm selling the heck out of your products. How can I, you know, make more? But honestly, Kristen, I got so frustrated because I would create these unique listings and people would just jump on them with their own bundles, right? And it was, or their own multi-packs. And I were put in all this work and then, you know, somebody else had the same supplier that I had just secured 
and it was very frustrating. So I was glad to have my private label thing that I was developing. I got my brand on the market in 2018 and it was like end of 2017. I was selling the whole time wholesale, these other things, doing retail arbitrage. Um, and then I launched my own brand and I sourced that from the U S as well as China. So I launched three products. Um, I'm still selling, um, two of them today. Um, and, uh, from there I found the process of sourcing of inventing a product and bringing it to market to be very hard and frustrating. And there wasn't a lot of good education out there. There was a lot of here's Alibaba and how you find something, but not here's if you have an idea for a product, here's how you bring it to market. Here's how you get better prices from your suppliers. Here's how you, you know, whatever. And so from there, I just kind of went on this journey to figure it out myself and help as many other people as I could along the way. That is so awesome and so needed because once you kind of dip your toes in and you get a little bit good, like this is, I think a lot of where our listeners are, right? Right where you were before you discovered, Hey, there's a better way to do this. There's, you know, and figuring it out on your own. That was me and my Amazon journey as well. When I was going through, you know, of course started with thrifting and arbitrage and things like that. And then moving into wholesale and being extremely disappointed. And of course this is rewinding many years back as well. It's like not in 2023, things are way different than we kind of when we started and, and did some things. Um, but the same type of thing is discovering, like there's not a whole lot of education on this. There's not a whole lot of help. I have to kind of bumble and stumble and figure out which is the best business model. Of course, that's when I landed on wholesale bundling when the wholesale was great and I was doing okay, but it was so, it was volume dense. It was like, you must move a lot of product and manage a lot of SKUs and do all this just to kind of tip the scales and, and make a decent living. I'm like, well, this can't be the way, you know? And so when I started bundling, that's when I realized, Hey, I can put a lot more meat on my bone for myself sourcing multiple different things and creating these bundles and kits. Um, but then com comes the point where, okay, we get these discontinued items or you're making something custom and then the price skyrockets for some reason. So that's where, that's where you come in to kind of educate us and tell us how do we reach beyond? Okay. So there's some of the basics of, yeah, we can get wholesale suppliers, look at catalogs, this and that, but when we want to get real serious about, um, making this work, how do we start going about that? Because obviously you have figured out this journey and you're going to lay the land for us. Um, what was one of the first steps that you had to realize that something has to be different? I, I can do this a different way. What am I going to do? Well, I think the first thing was the first major milestone that really changed things for me was actually going to China. So I partnered with a friend and um, who had been to China many times and um, I hosted my very first China trip and I had never been before. So I invited people to kind of come with me on this journey of like, oh my gosh, we're going to China, right? And this was in 2018 and China seemed so far away to me. It seemed so crazy to go. I was actually pretty afraid. Um, but I was sourcing from Alibaba basically and nothing wrong with Alibaba. Alibaba is amazing. I'm about to speak at their very first co-create conference in Vegas coming up here in a few weeks. Um, but, and you know, I, I kind of got to know my suppliers a little bit but I was mostly just having chats with them. I'd never had a video call. I'd never seen these products being made. I didn't know really how to build relationships with these suppliers. They seemed so far away and so out of reach. Um, yeah. And so it's hard, you know, if you're just having these kind of chat conversations on Alibaba, it, what I discovered when I went to China for the first time is that there's a whole world out there of different suppliers that aren't even on Alibaba. There's this amazing, beautiful world of factories that you can visit, that you can see things being made. There's relationships that you can build and everything changes. When you open that door, not only, you know, the Canton Fair, this is the largest sourcing exposition in the world. 
there are three phases. Each phase has a different categories of products, but each phase has over 60,000 suppliers. Mm -hmm. And if you have to walk it, it's 217 American football fields. It is three buildings the size of three large airports. Mm -hmm. Massive. And these suppliers that come to the Canton Fair, they bring their best because you're competing with 60,000 other suppliers, right? I was going to say the competition there has to be so cutthroat. And I've actually even noticed that reaching out to suppliers, um, not just through Alibaba, but I've had some, I've had, I have a private label brand and some private label items that I've made and have improved upon. And the moment I let them know I'm shopping their competitors, they literally drop everything and want to do whatever it takes to keep your business, which is, I think is, is such a, cultural difference sometimes here let let i mean i'm just gonna i'm honest i'm tough i'm just realistic and i have had interesting conversations even with u.s and american suppliers that they almost act like you're putting them out giving your their business to where when in, in yes. china they're like they will do everything and anything to win your business and and give you the best that they can give you this has been my experience at least yes. um versus someone in the u.s is like oh well i guess we'll work with you it's like what do you mean <laughs> to find my supplier in the u.s because i have an invented product so i have a plastic injection molded product and to find my supplier, I had to basically pitch myself and my business. And it was so hard. It it was not easy. And like you said, they kind of act like, you know, you're, you're, you're inconveniencing them, you know, yeah. and you kind of are because most of them are, um, they're producing privately. They're not contract manufacturers. Mm -hmm. So like you have in China where their whole manufacturing setup has been to do contract manufacturing. Right. So it's just a different model. And it's like that in, in Mexico as well, where, you know, it's not as easy. It's not China. You can't just go to Mexico and um, ask a supplier like, hey, can you make this for me? It's not the same. So yeah, that first trip to China for me, it was first of all eye opening because I saw all these other suppliers who were selling, who were offering and making products that I sold, first of all. And when I would go into their booths and talk to them, the prices I was getting are were so much less than what I was already paying. Can so you then give us I'll just the number example? You don't have to tell us the product, but like what you were paying and then you yeah. get to Canton and realize, oh my gosh, what is this? So I was um, doing floor mats, right? I was selling floor mats and I um, was paying, I think like $6 a unit for them through my initial supplier. And I walked into a booth at Canton Fair that had the same type of floor mats and so many new ones that I've never seen. They had colors that I never saw. They had different models of things. And that's the thing about going to these trade shows because you're just like, whoa, nobody has that on Amazon. Oh my gosh. And I already know the market. So I walk into this booth and they, um, their pricing was like $2. Hmm. So suddenly my multiplier, I sell these for like $20 each. My multiplier went from like much less to a 10 X. 7X is the gold standard in retail. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden I'm sourcing it for $2 and I'm selling it for 20, 10 X multiplier. Do you know with net profit, how many more products I can buy with that net profit and you know how fast I could scale immediately my business changed. Mm -hmm. So for me, just paying that trip to China was paid for 10 times over again because it changed everything. I mean, yeah, I was I mean, able to not only find new products, but reduce my prices, build better relationships. Then I went and visited those suppliers and I learned how these things were made which set me up to be able to then source from other suppliers and speak the language and build relationships. So my question about that is the cultural barrier, right? Because I think a lot of people, when they go for the first time specifically to China or they're thinking about it, they think, how am I going to communicate? How am I going to speak to them? What, when you make a purchase, like, what does that look like? And like, do you, is it just like, I mean, cause I've been to a lot of trade shows here and you know, you're writing purchase orders right there with the suppliers. You can communicate with them. You can talk about pricing. You can talk about things. So um, what's, what was your experience like your first time when you went over there with the cultural barriers, the language? language barriers, like the do's and the do nots. 
That is such a good question, you know, because I was scared about that. I was like, I don't know, you know, and now I've been so many times. So it's like, I have a team in China now. And, you know, that's the other thing, meeting people that can help you and can be your boots on the ground, if you will, uh, forgive my military background and terminology there, but um, it makes all the difference. So right now, if it's taking you six to eight weeks to get a sample, Imagine when you have somebody in China there that can go to the supplier that can speak Mandarin, that can work for you and with you, and they're sending you immediate pictures. You don't have to necessarily get get it in person, and you can make those changes on the fly. It speeds everything up. It changes everything, and you'll meet tons of people um, at Canton Fair that can do that for you. You'll make so many great connections. So speaking of the language barrier, how did I make all those great connections? most people speak English. <laughs> so it's really great. Like all the suppliers, like even if the big boss, which, you know, if you learn advanced sourcing from me, you'll learn how to talk to the boss because in China, kings negotiate with kings. So we want to make sure that we are bosses talking to bosses. That's the culture there. Um, so you don't just want to talk with the salesperson. The salesperson that you're talking to has no power over pricing. They cannot reduce your prices in most cases. Um, they can go talk to the boss. If they know they've got this much room and you're paying this much, right? They can lower your price a little bit, but you're never going to get, you know, like I've saved people $90,000 on one negotiation call because I'm talking to the boss and I know what my target prices are. I know what I need to do to scale, right? So that's like the next level, right? Right now, don't worry about communication. It's going to be great. Every supplier either brings in sales reps that speak really pretty good English and um, and there's translators on the floor that you can take with you. Um, it, but we never needed them. In Mexico, yes. So, um, you know, as um, I don't know if we mentioned it, I co-founded the only multi-category trade show in Latin America because people are wanting to get out of China and start to source in Latin America. In Mexico, it's harder. There's not as many people who speak English, but we had translators walking the floor at our trade show. And so, you know, we try to get a little bit, you know, past the initial language barrier. And then you just call over a translator, like help us out, you know, and then we got through it just fine. But in China, especially at Canton Fair, it's such a massive event with, it's the largest influx of Westerners to China twice a year. So it's really, there's a lot of Westerners there. You know, it's, it's pretty normal. Um, you're going to find English all over the place. Awesome. That's really good to know, because I think that's a lot of what stops people. It's not always the financial investment. It's really like, how do I navigate this? How do I go to China if I've never been there? How do I go to China if I don't read or speak the language? And you can't expect everyone to speak English on your behalf. I mean, you're going into their culture, right? And so I love hearing you say that. And I, of course, that is a selfish question as well, because I have never been to China. I do want to go. I just, those are the things that are that are on my mind to scare me more than anything else. But I also have had that experience that you've had of um, when I was creating my first private label product and I didn't go there, but I recently out to multiple suppliers and then the conversations that we were able to have there and the different pictures and the different things that they sent back to me so we didn't even have to do that wait for a sample and get it here i mean eventually i did but the pictures and everything were very initial and we could say no change this do this um but i love again another tips that you're giving here is kings negotiating with kings and how you really present yourself as your business owner makes a difference in the prices and the people that you get to talk to it's like okay i'm the owner founder um boss ceo Oh, then they recognize that language of saying, okay, this is the person that's in charge and this is who we get to speak with. So I really appreciate those tips. Okay. So talk about, so because of your China trips and the different things that you've had, you build these trips now for other people, people like me, people like my clients that come and say, okay, I want to go to China now. What do I do? So talk a little bit about that because I find that super fascinating. I, I do that with people here in the States for people that have never even been to a trade show, like forget Canton for a second. Like let's break the ice here and I'll, I'll walk yeah. people through the trade shows. I'll teach them how to talk to the suppliers. And this is people that speak your language and stuff that is like normal. So, um, it says like next level, next, next level stuff there. And you know, let's just be real. Most of our stuff is coming from overseas. I mean, I love made in the US products and I would love that, but I've checked into it and I just can't seem to find anything 
that's a reasonable enough price for me to be able to make a profit and I'm in business. And as much as I would love to keep all the business here, um, the reality is, is that most of the stuff is made overseas. And if we, if that's where they're making it, that's where we need to go and find out, um, you know, how we can get that. So the question is, how do you make that transition? How do you take that big leap from being like, okay, I've got my feet wet with, with sourcing here. Let's see if we can make that big leap into um, sourcing in China. Well, of course it seems really out of reach. And also we hear all these things about China. We hear that, you know, it, the government is crazy and this it's so controlled. And, you know, I mean, me with my military background, it was definitely nerve wracking. <laughs> it was nerve wracking to go. I had this vision of like, what is China like? Like, you know, is it going to be like, I kind of had this vision of like gloom and doom, you know, yeah. like, okay, like, what are these hotels going to be like? Are they going to be like torture? And, you know, is, am I going to be able to get around and is it safe? And, you know, and so what is wonderful about putting on a trip is you remove all of those barriers for people. Okay. You may like, when you get there, all you have to think about, if you come to China with me, all you have to think about is booking your flight and getting your visa. And I help you with all of that. So that's it. That's all you have to worry about is getting to the airport in Guangzhou. And that's a very, there's huge airport, you know, very easy to get to, right? Um, and so you get to the airport and we have somebody there with a sign. The minute you get out of customs, we have somebody there with a sign with a private car to take you to the hotel so that you're not like, oh, how do I get around around here? What do I do? You know, you'll see a big sign with your name on it and you'll be taken off to the hotel. Now, the other cool thing about Guangzhou is it's a huge city. Most of the cities in China are much bigger than anything we have in the U.S., and um, the transportation is great. It's very, um, it's it's like any other big city around the world. At night, everything lights up. It's beautiful. There's amazing restaurants and there's a great nightlife. And I think when you think about, I don't know, but for me, when I thought about China, I I expected it to be different, you know? And then when we went out to these, huge like beautiful restaurants and had uh drinks at the at the nightclub and just it was like whoa okay this place is actually really cool and it's really fun there's parks everywhere there's rivers uh we're gonna go on a pearl river cruise we're gonna go on some city tours there's some beautiful buildings to explore um so it's like any other big city. I mean, you hear about Shanghai, you hear about Beijing, you know, those places are really exciting and they're not out of your reach. And it's actually really affordable to go. Like your, your meals, well, we cover like 90% of your meals, right? And all of your transportation throughout the time, your transportation to and from the Canton Fair, um, your breakfast every day, we eat breakfast together in the hotel. And then we head over to the Canton Fair together. We're going to go on factory tours together so that we can teach you what should you be expecting if maybe you want to go visit your suppliers. That's what I did. I was sourcing from the same trading company. I had to learn the difference between a factory and a trading company. I was sourcing from the same trading company on Alibaba. I still source from them to this day, but I actually went and visited them outside of Ningbo. And I took a bullet train, which is just goes just as fast as an airplane. And it's really comfortable. And I went by myself. I had my supplier arrange it, went by myself on this bullet train. Um, and they came and picked me up in a really nice car and, you know, made sure, you know, and it was so exciting to meet her for the first time in person. I got to know her kids. I got to see the, the place where she worked. I got to see how the trading company worked. Um, and still to this day, when we get on a video call together, I see the kids, you know, I see um, it's just a totally different relationship. Um, knowing who your supplier is as a person and working together. Um, and you want to talk about MOQs, you know, with all of my suppliers, I have arranged to um, order four months of supply at a time and they ship 30 days supply directly to Amazon and they store the rest for me. And I've never had one of my suppliers say no to that. And it's really reduces my cost. And, you know, 
when I get on a call with them, um, they're happy to serve, you know, because we've become kind of family. And when the pandemic hit, they were the first ones to send me masks. When the, when the U S was out of masks, they were like, are you okay? What can we send you? You know, all of that. And it was just like this beautiful experience. So to answer your question, it's not out of your reach. It's very easy to fly to Guangzhou. You just got to get there. And then we go, we do dinners together out. We eat all the food. We're going to go do karaoke together. We're going to, you know, go on a river cruise. We're going to hang out. There's lots of networking events because there's so many sellers there at this time of year. So we're going to go to some of the big networking events and we're going to enjoy the Canton Fair. And the Canton Fair is massive. So we have all of our trip mentors who come along. We have them help you kind of navigate and like walk through with you. They'll walk through with you and do some talking with the with the suppliers with you. You know, they, we kind of get to know each other and what everybody's looking for. And we have a WeChat going. And so it's like, oh, hey, I'm in Hall C. And I found that thing that you're looking for, Kristen. It's over here, you know, and then people can kind of, you know, help each other find things and you just make friendships to last a lifetime. And what it does for your business is just incredible. That is so exciting. I, it just makes me like, okay, where do I sign? So one of the <laughs> final questions I have there is I, I think the same intimidation, maybe even more going to China and having something so big and so massive how do you beat the overwhelm? Because you know, when you walk in, even when I go to like the Atlanta trade show, for example, America's Mart, or even in Dallas marketplace, and you just like, there's three buildings and there's hundreds and hundreds of suppliers even there and you know, things like that. How do you reduce the overwhelm of things being so ginormous and so many different competitors on the same products? You know, that's such a great question. Um, and it's something that everybody struggles with, whether or not you're doing private label or because there's so many new ideas. I, we entrepreneurs, we are squirrel chasers. You know, we, <laughs> we're, we're the struggle is real. <laughs> our, yeah, we're focused on our bundles. We're focused on our private labels. We're focused on our business. And then it's like squirrel. Okay, wait, but there's an opportunity over here and there's an opportunity over here. And so Okay, the way to look at that is um, number one, go in with a plan of what's most important to you. So you are obviously going to have some things that you're looking for, right? That you are really wanting to find better prices for or better ideas for, you know, like I had some ideas for products um, that um, I was looking for. For example, this is a 3D printed version of my litter box cleaner. Um, these colors are great. That's what we had left in ABS plastic. <laughs> but I wanted to make this part collapsible because of shipping on Amazon, right? And this is actually a really large product. This is a mini version. Um, and I was walking around the fair looking for something that was collapsible in a container like this that I could develop on my own for my product. And I found it there. Um, and, you know, met with that supplier and, and it was really great. And they're still my supplier to this day. Um, but so there's those things you're looking for. There's those things that are stock that you're like, yep, I know. I just want to find a better price for that. Like my floor mats that I was talking about. Right. Um, and then there's the new ideas, the new things that you're going to see. So what we do before you come on the trip is we actually teach you how to create your sourcing list, what to expect how to like prepare for when you do see those squirrel ideas, um, how do you get their information and, and without feeling pressured to like make an order, like none of that's necessary. Like a lot of people, they don't source anything at the fair. They just go, they get the contact information and then they follow up either with a factory visit after the fair or they, um, or they just call, set up a meeting, you know? So what I do is I go in with a plan and then I prepare for squirrels. So as long as you know, like, oh, okay, I'm going to see a lot of squirrels. I, I'm going to prioritize the things that I must do, right? And then I'm going to have fun with the things that are extra. And when you go into every booth, we teach you a process. We teach you a process of how to, you know, and I'm happy to share it here. You go into your, you go into the booth and you, you know, you look at different things. 
You ask a few questions about different products. If you're looking to differentiate a product, you can ask them, hey, can we do this in other colors? Is there, you know, tell me about more about this product, right? And then what you do is on your phone, you take a picture of the things that you're interested in. You take a picture of, you exchange business cards with the person, right? They will staple it to their book. And you also, we teach you to bring your own book and staple their business card inside of your book. And um, you can make some notes about the products. And then what I do is I take a picture of that page in my book and with their business card. And now when I go back through my phone photos at the end of the day, I see all the products I was interested in, followed by the page with the notes with their business card. And then I take a picture with them and we exchange information on WeChat and I send them the picture of us. And then when I follow back up with them, I know who they are and they know who I am because we have the picture together from the Canton Fair. Um, and it's very easy because that's also in my phone. Oh, here's the person that I've met there. Here's their name. Here was their business card. Let me go ahead and follow back up on WeChat with them. And let's start that conversation again. Awesome. That is really cool. I love that extra step of taking a picture with the person. I know we do very similar things when we do our walkthroughs and the trade shows there about taking the business card and stapling it either to the catalog or a picture of what you took. And I know that's a little bit different to where I, I found that the Chinese suppliers, like I've, I've met several of them in Source Direct and ASD. So when they were having that and they had, so it's kind of like this mini sample of mm -hmm. like the different Chinese manufacturers that kind of come over and kind of work with you there. And there was, that was one of the things that, that I did but stapling that and keeping that and showing the picture. So I love the picture with the person because now that's another personal connection. Now, I, that's something that I love that you've said throughout all this whole conversation is really it's about these relationships. It's about establishing like just because there's a language or culture barrier does not mean that we can't establish relationships with people. They're just people like us. They're just doing this side of business and we're doing this side of business and we're coming together. So I just love how this is all so relational and so helpful. So when is the next trip? <laughs> yeah, so we're actually going in October. Uh, we're going the October 24th through November 2nd. So we'll be at the Canton Fair during a part of phase two and a part of phase three. And phase two and three are um, the most popular categories. So you have like home and kitchen and bathroom and sporting goods and you name it, it's there. Um, so you're going to office supplies and furniture and pets and <laughs> this is like everything you can imagine. So many suppliers. Um, yeah. And I just wanted to mention one other thing um, you were talking about, um, you know, making those connections. One thing that a lot of people have asked me about that they struggle with is, wait, but if I'm not going to source from them, like I, if I'm not sure I'm going to source from them, like, won't they be offended if like, I don't follow up? No. It is beautiful to keep those connections. So I have a few connections that I made that were super extra helpful. Like, hey, you should go here in China and you should see this. And like, we became good friends. And when I go back to the Canton Fair, I still message them and I say, hey, I'm here. Are you at the fair? Like, let's get together. Let's, let me come by your booth, you know? And we've been friends all these years. It never hurts to have additional friends in China. You can get them to refer you to different factories, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to add, don't be afraid to make a contact with somebody, even if you're just talking and you're like, oh man, I'm probably not going to source from them. It's okay. Make a contact, make a friend, you know, and you, you may have a friend that needs that exact product and you can refer. And so just look at it as building your network and have fun. So yes, that I just want to add that because that's something a lot of people are concerned with. But our next trip is October 24th through November 2nd. And if you're planning on coming, you can you can um, visit our landing page. It's amazingathome.com forward slash China. And um, if you're planning, if you're thinking about coming, if you're even thinking about the possibility of coming to China, um, the one thing that you should keep in mind is you need a visa to visit China. It's a very easy process. The Canton Fair is free to attend for buyers. Uh, you go on their website and you get an invitation letter 
And then you have to take, it's just an e-process. You fill out an e-form and then they send you a letter, you know, an invitation letter. And then you take that letter to your consulate or you can use an express visa service and they will take that letter and they will take your passport and they will send both in. You have to send some other information too, you know, like uh, information about your trip, your hotel, stuff like that. We provide you with all of that to help you out. Um, but just in case you decided to go to China on your own, that's what you'd need to do. You need to register for the fair. You need to get a visa. And the reason I say this, Kristen, is, is because it takes a couple of weeks to get a visa. So I think you can get it in up to like four days. If you use a super express, it's a little more expensive. It's like a $400 fee if you do that. But um, if you just do the normal, like two weeks, it's like a hundred dollars and you know they can get it back to you. But you do have to send your passport away for two weeks. And then it comes back with like a page like glued in you know um okay. and that visa allows you to visit again and again for 10 years awesome. so you just have to do that once but it's if like you get a passport time, <laughs> once you yes. get a passport it's good for 10 years once you get this visa that's great to know thank you so much for sharing all of these tips because i think it really eases the 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 anxiety that people have about traveling and traveling overseas and of course now post covid people are 10 times more scared to go anywhere on a plane or a, a cruise or anything like that it's like oh my gosh um but the reality is is that these guys don't miss this these are scary but they're also people that have been there done that i mean like i at this point after this conversation would go anywhere with you because <laughs> you just know you're, you're just you just make me feel at ease be like it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine so um let's go to china with amy and amazing at home and you guys if you're interested again she said amazing at home.com forward slash china check out the trip um i'm considering that's actually like right after my birthday and that would be kind of a fun birthday trip um if my husband can let me go to China without him and be like, maybe you need to come with me. That would be a lot of fun. Um, he's not interested at all in, in the e-commerce world. He's like, that's your world, babe. But um, I think maybe that would be just a fun experience. I mean, you've talked about the nightlife and the restaurants, forget the fair. Like, yeah, I well, see the city. The people do, we do have like a partner's deal where, you know, it's like a, you know, it's kind of like a two for one, but it's a little more expensive, but it's basically like a really good deal um, to come with partners or with your spouse. And we always have people bring their spouses along. If for no other reason, the fair is so, I brought my kids. Mm -hmm. I brought my kids to the Canton Fair and they were just like, wow, this is so cool. You know, it's a unique experience of a lifetime. Um, so yeah, a lot of people do bring their spouses and stuff, even if they are not, um, because it's China, you know, like when else are they going to get to go to China? And you know, they still can come on all the excursions with us and everything. And they might come to the fair one day and then the next day they might want to take a break, you know, and you're still like in it. You're so excited. But for them just to see that it's really just such a the first day that I was there with all these people that I had brought to China. I was like, I felt like Oprah Winfrey. I just was I was standing on a on a um on a escalator like going up in this huge canton fair complex and i was just like china <laughs> it was so cool you know and everybody else you know their eyes were so big and we were all just alive with the possibilities of what this could mean for us and for sure like i still remember every one of those people who came on my first trip and my second trip i'm still in contact with them today when you do something like that together it just it changes things, it does. right? It really forms a bond that you can, you know, number one, like get rid of some of those fears and anxieties of I can't or I won't or I'm I'm scared. It's okay to be scared. You just got to do it and you got to do it and figure it out, you know, and it's helpful when you can go with someone who has gone and done and figured it out. So you guys, again, amazingathome.com is where you can find Amy and all of the amazing things that she has done. You guys, this is a brilliant woman here. You have to make sure that you're following her and consider the China trip or if China's a little too too big and scary for you perhaps um the uh, a mexico trip because i know they're doing mexico trips as well throughout the year uh different sourcing trips you guys these sourcing trips are so much fun if you like to look it's like shopping it's just shopping for your store right this is the same thing i say with the trade shows here is that like if you've never done it you've got to do it just one time and now i'm just i'm i'm excited i'm excited to go to china at some point and i think i'm gonna go with you guys in your trip um because i, I would honestly... love to have you i would love we would love to have you absolutely i mean you got to come if you know 
Let me know. You guys, you got to tell Kristen, she's got to come on our trip as a mentor. Wouldn't you want Kristen to be on our trip as a mentor? She's walked through all these U.S. Uh, oh based goodness. trade shows like just that to not buy anything, just to point out the bundles would be the funnest part for me just be like you guys there's a bundle here there's a bundle here there's, i mean every single booth would be that's all i do and and when i go to the regular trade shows with people it's like do you see the bundle over here and everyone's just like whoa slow down a little <laughs> just like and that's no, how but i was products. too <laughs> like yeah that's how i was too walking through the canton fair for the first time because i and every time after that because i work with so many clients in so many different categories it was very easy for me when we saw a squirrel, um, when someone saw a squirrel and they're like, what do you think about this, Amy? I'm like, oh, not a good category. Or yes, that's a really good opportunity, you know, because I've worked with so many different people. So I know that that would, that would be amazing. Um, so hopefully Kristen decides to come with us and then she could say come with us to china and you know we could do that together <laughs> sounds like so much fun well thank you so much for all of your tips and all of your expertise here you guys this advanced sourcing isn't as advanced as you think now i feel i'm even more educated now i feel like i absolutely could do this now that i've talked to you a little bit more because honestly i've been really scared uh to go to because i've heard it's just so big and so massive and so uh crazy to navigate and i'm definitely a squirrel chaser uh, so I have to rein it in and be like, okay, what am I here for? There is definitely a reason I need to go specifically for my private label product uh, that I've been working on. We want to make some improvements and I would love to see and feel and touch the material because it's a textile that it's like, okay, I want to see and touch and feel this like in person and see how it's made and see, can we do this and this? And speaking in person is just so different than speaking uh, online, even, even on video chats when you can touch and feel and just that's always why I love in-person trade shows, whether it's whether it's China or here, I always encourage people to go and just chat and just experience this because it will be a game changer for you and for your business. So again, Amy, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing and that don't take that for granted. Thank you for being part of the Amazon Files podcast and please let everybody know again where they can get in touch with you. Yes, for sure. You guys can visit my website, amazingathome.com. If you'd like me to review your listing for free, I'll take a look at it. If you're not making sales or you just want to know, like, what could you do better? I'm a total listing nerd. So you can visit underneath the services menu there, free listing review. I'll take a look and just record my screen share and I'll go through your listing and give you some tips. No strings attached. It's just something I love to do. I'm a nerd about it. Uh, but amazingathome.com and you can follow me on any of the channels. I'm a total AI nerd. I'm a product development nerd. So you can follow me amazing at home on TikTok, YouTube, LinkedIn, all the things and just happy to connect with you guys anytime. And of course, you know, join us in China, amazingathome.com forward slash China. We'd love to have you. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much. And you guys, we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.